guys how are we all doing i hope we are well welcome back to the second and final installment of the french hood um adventures Uri, she was a uh, feisty one mm. yeah she uh she kept me on my toes um and yeah i'm not sure we'll make another one i'll be honest it was a bit tricksy but at the end of the uh, last French Hood video, you would have seen that as I was talking, I wasn't too sure as to whether or not I was going to unpick the lining. Um, by the time I come to edit it, I clearly stated that yes, I was going to uh, unpick it. And that is exactly what I did. Oh. It, I was working to ask the instructions and it's because it's not something you can easily mock up, you, you don't really know the order of works. And I do feel that sewing the lining on before doing any of the embellishments is a bit of a mistake unless your lining is the same color as your thread which you could do and then get away with it but because my lining was quite different and most linings tend to be different from the thread that you're going to use because it's also, it needs to be the same color as the um the, the, the main fabric i just felt that that really it really should have been that you sew the lining to the back of the brim and the back of the um, the crescent you, you have to leave it fl flapping around that is a bit fiddly, but I'm going to be honest, this is not a beginner project by any stretch of the imagination. So by the time you're making something like this, you're probably a bit more used to manipulating and handling fabrics in awkward ways, doing a bit of awkward hand sewing. So I don't feel that um, that, that shouldn't be a problem for a more experienced sewers. If you're a beginner, you've got to start somewhere, but I'll be honest, please don't start with this. Start with something a bit more simple. Um, but... We're going to get on to it. I'm going to show you the process from the unpicking to the final reveal. Um, and yeah, hopefully you'll enjoy. So let's get on with it. Yes, this was as annoying as you may think it was. Um, and I was concerned I was going to end up ripping through either the linen or the uh, silk fabric. Thankfully, neither of those happened. But really, you shouldn't be sewing the front of the lining onto the brim or the crescent in this matter. It really should be a different order. And that is not the only time I have to unpick something in this project. Hmm. Now I did make a little bit of a mistake on this, um, Harding, <clears throat> yo, thank you. Um, I don't know what it is about gathering fabrics, I, I just, it's a bit like making me and meringues, I just can't do it, it seems the most simplest thing in the world, and yet, nope, it was a bit of a mess this, this one, um, I think I probably should have maybe have hemmed the top of the, the veil as well, I don't know, it just ended up being a bit lumpy and bumpy, so I had to do a little bit of something else afterwards, but, I managed to attach it in the end and it looks right I think and attaching the pearls I left the pearls on the string it was just going to be easier than trying to take them off the string to then re-sew them all on that individually um, as you can see I am just literally sewing in between each pearl a couple of times moving over to the next one and that's how I attached it this is why I didn't want to have the lining on already I would have made an absolute mess of this otherwise but there we go And here, here we go. Once it's all done, um, I attached it all. Um, look at me losing a thimble. Yay. But the only good thing about this was at least I had already sewn the, the line down once before. So I had a nice sharp line to sew to. Um, otherwise, it'd be a little bit more fiddly. But this is a fiddly project. What can you do? And here's me making the first of two attempts. I did tell you I had to even pick something up attaching the crescent to the brim. Now the instructions say to attach the brim, I keep saying that, attach the crescent to the brim about three quarters of an inch away from the front, um, depending on the size of the um, embellishment that you've got. That was a mistake. And you'll see why in a little bit. But basically what I'm showing you here is what I had to do a second time. It makes no difference. You just have to attach it in a slightly different uh, position. But here I'm using some silk thread um, in a rather large needle. Um, as you can see, you do need something a bit hefty to get through all of that. Um, a little bit fiddly, but like I said, this is a fiddly project. Now, this is what it looked like at the end of it all. Um, you can see that, that everything is all attached. This was too high. This was far too high. It looked ridiculous, so I had to unpick it. <laughs> 
but here's me attaching the gold trim i hummed and hard about when i was going to attach the trim so i decided i'll start um, by gathering it all up um, just to get it ready and i did two lines of gathering um, as you can see this is some gold organza that's me just pulling it together satisfying but a bit messy as you can see all those threads and um fibers there get it in focus please thank you and you just do this to get to the required length that you need well it's not really diamonds but i couldn't yeah i couldn't help it and I didn't sew, sew the sewing on of the main um, embellishment because that was really quite frustrating. And as you can see, my brim, ugh, my crescent has moved much further back past the brim. But also, if you look at it, you can just see how messy it is inside. That's why I didn't want the lining to be involved in any way. And here's me getting ready to attach some tiny little freshwater pearls and a sleeping Bertie. It's a bit like Sleeping Beauty, but more fur. And I just kind of made up the uh, pattern. You'll see a bit later on what it looks like. But again, I just had to keep going through the back and sewing it on. At this point, I had um, a very, very fine beading needle, very long, and that worked an absolute treat. But as you can see, I'm just adding on some pearls just to kind of hide the, the um, stitches. Can't quite see it there, but you'll see in other pictures, there will be some scarring from the unpicking that I had to do. And yes, once again, much later on, here's me attaching the lining. Now this part started off quite easy, but as you can see, I'm, when I come back to adding the uh, gold trim, it gets a little bit more awkward, but to be honest, this was really was the best way I felt to do it. Um, it was awkward, but it meant that the gold trim was caught in between the lining and the main fabric. And I was just about able, as you can see, a little bit i caught a little bit of the fabric the, the silk fabric and i was able to push it through to the back not the neatest compared to some of the other hand sewing that i've done but this meant that i had i didn't have the ruffle or the organza against my face or against my hair getting caught Here we are, the lovely, lovely gold trim. You can see, yeah, you can clearly see the scarring there. You won't see it from a distance, but I was so upset when I had to repick it. It, it looked just sat too high on the head, even when I tried to push it back to sit back on the head. If you look at a, a picture of Anne Boleyn, it sits quite far back. She shows a lot of hair. It just looked wrong. So that was something that is not correct. It is not, it's supposed to be much further back on the crescent, but there we go. So what do we think? Yeah, we didn't look too bad. I think it looks a little bit lopsided. Um, it's very difficult to get everything to line up just right. Um, again, this is not a beginner's project by any stretch of imagination, um, but I'm really pleased with how it looks. Um, yeah, I like the fact that originally when I first had it, um, it sat bolt upright on top of my head, so it looked very, very odd. Um, and yeah it didn't look right at all so i had to unpick it which oh, i was so annoyed about um so i think that if you do want to do the tudor taylor's french hood do just be careful about how you put things together don't sew the lining on completely um do the back of the, the linings first then do the embellishments and, you, and then um sew the crescent on completely attach it do all the other embellishment and then sew the lining on after that um and yeah pinning marking doing whatever you can do to make sure you get everything centered take your time this actually didn't take too long to put together a couple of evenings worth of work maybe three evenings perhaps but it didn't take long um and yeah i think it sits really nicely now i've had to put it quite far back on my head to be honest i originally had my hair up in the kind of the more traditional tudor style which is the plaits that went over and around the back of the head but without having somebody else to help me to really sew my hair in with the tapes it just instantly collapsed um, and it sat too high so I basically put my top knot Shh. no it's not historically correct 
no choice. But as you can see, I'm going to put back. And I have no idea what the back looks like. I can't see it, but yeah, it looks really nice and it's going to have a bit floaty, but it's attached quite hard, so it's not going to fly off everywhere. But yeah, I mean, I'm not going to put the whole costume on. You're going to have to wait for the final, final reveal for that. But a little green emeralds. Well, emeralds. Fresh water pearls. Gold trim. Could this make, could this make a comeback in, the, in, in fashion? What do you think? Should it be a, should it be back in fashion? Should we do hashtag bring back the French hood? <laughs> I'll tell you what, if that made it out, that'd be hysterical. Hashtag French hood. There we go. Well. Wow. What do you think? Sexy, no? That was Fonglay. Uh, anyway. Thank you so much for following me on this particular journey. I still have my kirtle to do. I've got a couple of the bits and pieces, but I'm so very nearly done. It's amazing. And I've got a bit of time to spare, which is good because I've got other projects on the go. Tell me you're a creative without being telling me you're creative, huh? But anyway, thank you so much, guys. If you did like this video, please like, share and subscribe. I will be doing other historical costumes. I've got some 18th century stuff coming up um, and I do want to do some more modern modern Victorian no modern Elizabethan as well so stick around for that um, but I also you know I do um, other modern sewing as well so if you're you're keen to come just do a few bits and pieces I might might even have some interesting dye projects coming up in the future so watch this space but anyway you've been watching crazy cat lady productions please like share and subscribe until next time guys bye bye